We saw earlier in the chapter how variables set in PHP include files are available in the including file. Sometimes this is very convenient. We may want to have a variable available throughout the whole of a script or the whole of a project, but at other times it's not what we want. If we're not careful, it can result in chaos and confusion when you find that a variable has an unexpected value set somewhere and you have to try and track down where in a mass of code. Very often we want to avoid having variables floating around freely. We want to constrain them so that they only hold their value for a specific section of code so that we can easily find out what's going on and keep control of them. To do this, we use functions. PHP has hundreds of built-in functions, but we can also write our own custom functions, and this is where real flexibility and power can be achieved. Make a new file in PHP demos and save it as functions.php. We create a function with the keyword function, then the name that we're going to give it, then a set of parentheses, which for the moment are empty, and finally a set of braces, enclosing the code which makes up the function. Let's make a function called showFruit. Inside it, we'll assign a value to the variable $fruit1 and echo out that value. Run the file in your browser and you get nothing. Functions don't run until they're called. We call the function by entering its name and parentheses. Unlike in include files where we have to declare a function before we can use it, we can call a function before or after the function itself. It makes no difference. Now refresh the page and apples should appear in the browser window. Variables set inside functions are only usable inside the function in which they've been set. Try moving the echo statement out of the function to the main body of the file, save and refresh, and you'll get an undefined variable error, because the variable inside the function is completely unknown outside it. Move the echo statement back inside the function where it belongs. More often than not, this is how we want our variables to behave. We don't want them to be accessible all over the place, or chaos will ensue. But it also applies the other way around. Variables set outside a function are unknown inside the function. Let's try this. Set a variable before the start of the function, $fruit2, and give it the value peaches. And then try to echo that from within the function. And again, you'll get an undefined variable error. Very often, we do want variables set outside functions to be available inside them. We do this using the keyword global, and then the variable name inside the function. Global $fruit2. Save and refresh, and now the variable fruit2 is available inside the function. If you search on the web for global variables in PHP, you'll find a lot about them being bad practice. I'll come back to this in more detail in Chapter 9, and again at the end of the course, when we consider the way forward into programming for larger projects. But the short answer at this stage is that, for a small project of this sort, global variables are a perfectly acceptable technique to use. Their main downside is that they make the code harder to manage. For our purposes, when you're just starting out on PHP in a small project, we can safely ignore this issue. That's a short and very simple coverage of variable scope in PHP functions. And in the next lesson, we'll look at using parameters with our custom functions.